Okay, so let's see again. We're looking at now the number on the third tree. Okay, none of these bugs go to the third tree because this isn't a neighbor, right? We have to have a number to multiply by this to see how many of these bugs go onto the third tree because that's what we're trying to calculate, how many are going to be on the third tree. Well, it's pretty clear that none of these go on the third tree, right? So we just multiply this by zero. Okay? Now, how many of the bugs on the second tree go to the third tree? Well, we know that one bug goes because 10% of the bugs on the second tree go to the third, right? So we would multiply the 10 by 0.1. Okay? And then the number on the, th what do we multiply by the number on the third tree to contribute to the next number on the third tree? Well, 10% of the bugs on the third tree are going to go to the second tree, 10% are going to go to the fourth tree, right? So 80% of them are going to stay on the third tree. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we have 0.8. And then on the fourth tree, 10% of those are going to go to the third tree, right? Okay? Yeah. Now I'm going to write a little more here, but I'm going to write it now while you all are busy tearing into the pizza, uh, which will probably be here in a few minutes. Okay? Um, but that's the explanation. Yeah. Okay? So I'm going to leave myself room to write several comments here with arrows, again, explaining that in just a little more detail in case you need it. But now we see, and many of you have it already written out, that we could write this whole calculation as a simple, or as a single matrix calculation. Okay? So, our first row, well, it's going to be this one, because if we multiply our first row by this, we're going to get the number in the first row, right? So that's going to be our 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, wait a minute, 0 0.1. It's going to be the 0.1. Yeah, this is, um, and, and I was just looking at something, and I wasn't thinking, that's going to be your 0.85, talking about the first row, so the first tree. 85% of those bugs will stay on the first tree, so we have 0.85 here. Then 10% on the second tree will go there, and none from the third or fourth. Then for the third row, of course, none of the bugs on the first tree go to the third tree. 10% of the bugs on the second tree go to the third tree. 80% of those on the third tree stay there, 10% on the fourth tree. So that's the one we just saw. Okay? And then for um, the second tree, well, 10% of the bugs in the first, 80% of the bugs in the second, 10% of the bugs on the third, and none of the bugs on the fourth. Now, we notice a, a, a pattern that kind of emerges here that these numbers just shift over one to get these numbers, right? Because we're not calculating on the entry, which have slightly different rules because of what happens at the ends, um, these rows are going to look like this. And you can think about why. And now our last row is going to be 0, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.9, because 10% of the bugs on the third tree will go to the fourth. 90% of the bugs on the fourth tree will stay on the fourth, right? Okay? So now we see how to write down a model for this, okay? All right. If we had 20 trees, how would this look different? Be 20 rows. Yeah. Your first row would still be this, right? Mm -hmm. And your second row would still be this. And your third row would still be this. And then all the way down, and your 20th row would look like this, except it'd have a lot more zeros. And this row, uh, the, the you know, these rows would just keep adding zeros at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. And have fewer zeros to the right. So this point one, point eight, point one would just march right across up to, but not including the last row, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It might not make sense to everybody because you might still be working on why are those numbers what they are? Now I'm going to try to clarify that for you, okay? 
But if you're already there and understand that, then you understand this. And these things march across diagonally, right? Mm -hmm. And there are three numbers in the diagonal. We have a name for that. It's a tri-diagonal matrix. Okay? And these things are very important, very profound. You can model diffusion with a tri-diagonal matrix. Okay? And if you're talking about a short enough time interval, you can get a very, very good model. It'll tell you, for example, what happens uh, between the inside and the outside of that thickness of iron in that wind tunnel. Okay? If you have certain information about what goes on right at the, right at the surface as that air goes through, okay? And you don't have real good information about that. Okay? But if you measure the temperature distribution, you can infer what happens there, uh, which is really kind of neat, and you're not going to totally understand what I just said, but we're going to kind of develop it, okay? Mostly next week. We just want to get this idea of a tridiagonal matrix down this weekend so we can use them next week, okay? All right.